This is a story that came out on NBC News October 23rd, 2018, from Diamond and Silk to Kanye West. Why Republican efforts to convert Black voters are failing. I mean, after looking at these two buffoons and Kanye, it would make Black people run in the opposite direction. Oh, my goodness. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, moving on. Trump Republicans are in the market for African American supporters. Some would even say desperately so. How else to explain the new diamond and silk movie, Dummy Crats? Oh my goodness. He's too loud. Never mind. Which had its one day theatrical release last week, far from Oscar fodder or even the MTV awards, the film is part of a broader recent trend in which mostly white conservatives have sought out and elevated a series of black surrogates, hoping that these surrogates often unintelligible anti-liberal rantings will siphon black voters away from the Democratic Party. Now, what has the Republican Party ever done to attract black voters? Nothing, okay, nothing. (laughs) And as far as I'm concerned, neither party deserves the black vote. They haven't done anything for the black community at all and not worthy of anything from us as far as I'm concerned. With midterm election margins expected to be razor thin, these efforts has taken on a renewed sense of urgency. Kanye West is arguably the most high profile of these new ambassadors. West, who has taken to sporting a MAGA hat capped his September 29th performance on Saturday Night Live with a long-winded pro-Trump monologue claiming he was being bullied for supporting the president. West doubled down with an even more (laughs) meandering speech during his October 11 visit to the Oval, um, Oval Office and also at the Apple Store Unlike his wife, Kim Kardashian West, who visited the White House in May and successfully persuaded Trump to commute the sentence of 63-year-old grandmother Alice Johnson, a nonviolent drug offender who spent 21 years in prison. Kanye's brand of advocacy has accomplished very little. And Kanye ain't gonna attract nary a black person to the Republican party. (laughs) And if he does, it won't be such a tiny group. It's not even funny. Though he was to address the president about violence in Chicago and other important topics, Wes instead dissolved into a rant that seems to take even Trump by surprise. West antics haven't phased the overwhelmingly white Trump supporters who champion him, though he even has a few black defenders. Writing for the Daily Caller, the conservative site founded by Tucker Carlson, oh Lord, and Neil Patel in 2010 contributor Nick Fitzgerald, who is white, wrote an article based on West called The Left New Plantation, Intellectual Slavery. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, look at what kind of article he wrote about Kanye. What has West done to merit such vitriol? Ask Fitzgerald. The answer is frightening and simple. He is thinking for himself. He's wearing a MAGA hat and he has influence. Over what? (laughs) Over what? 
Of course, it's highly doubtful Fitzgerald would have been so quick to defend West had the rapper used the same influence to claim Trump doesn't care about black people as he did during a telethon for Hurricane Katrina victims in 2015. But he was talking about um, George Bush. He wasn't talking about Trump back then. In short, the GOP insistence that they are not just a party of rich white people has led them to latch on to any black supporter they can. This dramatic seems even more obvious when you consider their strange embrace of diamond and silk. Diamond and silk rose to GOP stardom as Trump surrogates during his successful 2016 presidential bid. The plain spoken sisters, Lynette Hardaway and Rochelle Richardson, North Carolina natives, have been welcomed on several Fox News shows, including Hannity and the Ingram Angle, sound like some damn porn flick, and Fox and Friends in April. They even testified before Congress about Facebook allegedly blocking and censoring their page, prompting Rep. Daryl Issa, Representative uh, Republican, California, uh, come to their defense. The pair's mainstream support is surprising, but not because their talking points often feel divorced from reality. Just a few years ago, the conservative establishment would have surely shunned the duel based on their flamboyant dress and hairstyles alone. Republicans barely took one-time Republican Party leader Michael Steele seriously. Yeah, modern day minstrel show. Clearly, this lack of polish and thoughtfulness doesn't bother the GOP. However, Diamond and Silk have been accepted into the fold because of their race and their willingness to publicly and profusely support Donald Trump when very few other black people will. As black women, the Democrats' most loyal base, Diamond and Silk, are arguably even more critical to the image Republican leaders are desperately trying to cultivate. This is perhaps why Diamond and Silk have been specifically praised for their aggression towards prominent Trump critic, Rep. Maxine Waters. Wow. That support undoubtedly is also why Diamond and Silk now have their own movie, Dummy Crap. It should be named Dummy Crap. (laughs) <laughs> dummy crap. The full length film was theoretically released for one night only, October 15th, but can now be screened on Vimeo. I ain't hardly watching no movie with Diamond and Silk in it. All right. Waters and fellow Democrat rep Nancy Pelosi are the film's biggest targets. While mostly unnoticed by the mainstream press, dummy crap (laughs) did get a few positive reviews in more conservative corners of the web. Writing for conservative site Newsmax, Michael Clark claimed the film would wake up undecided voters. Clark applauded the film's higher light a lighter tone and lists what he sees as its best moments, moments that, of course, expose prominent Democrats. Candace Owens is another woman who has used her personal story to rise among conservative ranks. Please, Candace ain't going to pull in no more people than Kanye. Okay, she's just not. Okay, 
So according to BuzzFeed, the Connecticut native was anti-Trump as recently as 2015, but now she too seems to be cashing in. And that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. These Black conservatives are out here because they know how to hustle. That's all. Okay, so she's cashing in as a conservative now, and she was not even, you know, she was actually talking very anti-Black just only a few years ago. This new Candace uh, Owens that you see now, this is pretty recent. She wasn't like that before. A lot of people may not know that, but she was not like this before. This is very recent. Okay, so she seems to be cashing in on her Trumpian enlightenment. Officially, she works as director of communication for Turning Point USA, a conservative advocacy group. But Owens, who got her start sharing pro-Trump speeches on YouTube and social media, may have a future on the small screen. Van Jones even told NBC News that she would be the next Megyn Kelly. Oh my God. Owens, Kanye West, Diamond and Silk are right about one thing, however, with President Barack Obama no longer in office, the cracks in the Democrats' African-American voting bloc are showing. Stephen Thrasher, a Black gay writer who says he typically votes Democrats, share his discontent with the Guardians last year. Okay, um, one of the main reasons for disillusionment is the Obama administration inability to make significant dents. Well, Obama's not even the president anymore. I, quite frankly, I don't even know why y'all keep talking about the man. He's gone and let him stay gone. So in other words, the Republican party are rising these, I don't know what you want to call them. These black conservatives to me are just as useful as a headache and constipation. As far as I'm concerned, I don't see too many people being influenced in the black community by these folks. Okay. At all. <laughs> Try again. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. To me, just reading this, it would make me want to run even further from politics. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. Far as I'm concerned, the Democrats suck and the Republicans suck. They have not been any kind of benefit to the Black community at all. Peace, family.